Hi, I'm uh, Paul Marienthal. Uh, I remember the very first day I was in Dutchess County, I was picking strawberries at, at your farm. <coughs> 25 years ago, I suppose. So. Beautiful, fabulous. That was uh, my introduction to Ulster County 25 years ago. Um, I'm going to speak from several points of view here. Um, I'm not a farmer. Uh, I'm a college administrator. Um, I have a deep love for growing things, but I'm a dean at college. That's my job. Uh, but I will say this, I also started a community garden. I'm responsible for the farm being here. I grow a garden in one of the BPI prisons in Woodburn. I grow a garden in my home, and I've been growing things since I was a little boy. Uh, and one thing I'd like to say, uh, this is both pure science and perhaps pure religion. And you go back to this question of what is a human? What is it being a human? Uh, Norman mentioned it, and I want to be really, really clear about this. We are all a gift of the sun. Every one of us and every living thing on this planet is a gift of the sun. We are entitled to absolutely nothing. Be clear about that, at least from my perspective. You know, you may have a very different uh, system of belief. Personally, my belief is that we are here for the grace of the cosmos, and the sun is what drives it all. And I don't know how much science you know or how much science you've done, but this is, I'm not talking spiritually here. This is real. Without the sun, there's no energy on the planet. Everything you eat is collected sunlight. Your body operates on the power of collected sunlight through plants, through fruit. Um, so uh, the question, and I appreciate this because it comes up in this question about the library, which I very much appreciated, um, the way in which uh, food has been uh, turned into utter commodity is uh, deeply sad and distressing. Um, the way in which it's been captured by Monsanto, for instance, is pretty awful. Uh, it, a lot of people forgot that we're all in this together. There's a gotten to be a leveling process about this. Uh, so that, that I'm just putting out there uh, as, a, uh, as a thought piece. In terms of the, the real question about food systems, um, I want to reiterate and want to say that um, John Paul, as the college farmer, is a part of uh, a rather extraordinary experiment in pushing back against corporate America at this point. The food service of the college, Chartwell, does an okay job. Chartwell is part of a company called Compass, which is one of the biggest food purveyors in the world. They serve uh, many hundreds of colleges, uh, airports, stadiums. It's, a, it's an enormous corporation. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, mostly a push by student interest, uh, and one student in particular who is a senior this year, Carter Vanderbilt, who some of you may know. You know Carter? Yes. You guys run into Carter? He's a PC, I'm not sure where he's a PC. He's a PC somewhere, and he's the head of the student government. He's an extraordinary uh, young person who in a meeting with all of the administrators at the school, after listening to um, all of the reasons why growing food and having a farm at the college was a romantic silliness, said, I want to respectfully disagree with everything you said, is what he said to the president of the college. And very articulately explained why Growing food, thinking about food, and considering the production of food was a civil rights issue, an economics issue, a human rights issue, um, a, a gender rights issue. There are the number of reasons why thinking about and considering um, food as not just something you shove in your face, but is actually cultural, it's part of a genetic issue, it's a part of who you are and will be, and who your children will be, um, all of these things came came up. And Carter spoke them very articulately, at the end of which uh, Leon said, what is the budget? And 
and we gave him a budget in this meeting. John Paul was there. I think you were there that day. You weren't there. You weren't in that meeting. Oh. Um, we gave him a budget, and uh, Leon looked at me and said, how, how much should the students be responsible for? And I said, half. Yeah. He said, that's unreasonable. How about a third? Then turned to Carter, and that was twenty thousand bucks. And John Pollock, you had a job offer. You need you needed to know fast. That was my recollection. And so I said to Carter, "Can you raise twenty thousand dollars? You have three weeks." And he said, "Yes, we can do it." And I called uh, another one of my students. I said, "Meet me in my office right now. We need to get a brochure out today, and you need to help." your fellow students do this. And the students raised $25,000 in a little less than three weeks to start a farm. So there's an enormous amount of interest. What's important about the farm is that it's entirely embedded in and connected with the food system at the college. And the food system at the college is part of the corporate world. So this is a complicated um, set of players. One of the most important things that has come out of this is that um, either Chartwells or we were going to have to hire somebody who would do what we really demanded, which was the food has to come from closer. We're, we don't want all our food to come from Mexico or Canada or wherever it's coming. We, want, we live in an agriculture area. We want it from here. Uh, they had no, Chartwells doesn't have a corporate setup to do that have nobody who can do that, who knows the place well enough. We said, you have to hire somebody. If you don't, we're going to. If I hire that person, that person is going to be in your face because they're going to be working for me. And I'm going to be talking to that person and your life's going to be hell. So they said, we'll hire that person. And so they did. They created a position called Food Advocate. Her name is Corinna Borden. She came to my office first and I said, you're the right person for this job. She sits in the corner of the new dining room, you should go meet her. She's a terrific person. She's an incredible advocate for local agriculture. And she intends to press Chartwells as far as she can go to make food local. Um, we are really local. John Paul's farm is as local as you can get, pretty much unless you, unless we farm the field out that window, which we want to do, but nobody will give it to us. If I had my brothers, we would be farming that that lawn out the window. Um, nobody will let us do it. So um, all of the food that is grown on the farm is sold to Charwells, and Charwells has agreed to buy it. Uh, this, as I'm sure Norma would say, or anybody who's farming, is an incredible thing for a farmer to have a market. Um, they get a fabulous price, so it's a good deal for everybody. Um, but what's important for, I think, for you all is to think about all the things that Norman has said, all the things that John Paul has said, Ken, yes, all the things that Ken has said, uh, about the way food systems work, who is responsible for them, who advocates for them, who intervenes, how is pricing set, what is the distribution, what is the chemistry, what is the diversity. Uh, these things all matter. We are members of an organization called the Real Food Challenge, started by a student from Brown about 10 years ago. Um, it's an evaluation system of everything that gets eaten at the college in terms of what they call real food. Real food involves an evaluation of how it's grown, where it's grown, what's in it, the labor involved, everything about the carbon footprint, etc. And it's very rigorous and it's tough. Um, Chartwells has opened up their books so that a student committee, and I urge you if you're interested in this, get on this committee, so the Food Initiative Committee, has gone through and actually looked at every invoice, invoice by invoice, and done the math on where we are in terms of real food, in terms of food that's grown reasonably, the labor on those farms is reasonably paid, etc. Uh, we are committed uh, to having that number be 20% by, by 2020. We're pretty close now. Personally, uh, when this came up two years ago, I said, I want 
and the child loves people look at me like I was a crazy person. But uh, that's what I'm aiming at, and that's what John Paul was aiming at. Uh, in order to do that, we would have to uh, radically alter the buying of food, and we will be pressing it. Uh, I don't think any of us who are on this end of it intend to back off on the pressure here. Um, and I will say, because it's important for you guys to know, uh, because John Paul has done such an extraordinary job of this, and he is a great farmer, and I urge you, get involved with John Paul if you want to learn about food and be involved in farming. Um, we are in the process right now, literally right now, of building a barn for John Paul uh, next to the farm. Uh, if you were there two days ago, you didn't see it. If you go out there this afternoon, there will be three quarters of a barn up. Um, and tomorrow and Sunday, if you want to come out and help us do some of the building, uh, come on out. We will be out there all day. Uh, you're having a meal there tomorrow. Your dinner tomorrow is at, the, at that site. Just know that if you want to be involved in the building, show up with real shoes on. This is not, this is not uh, a plate, this is not a sandbox. This is a construction site. You have to wear a hard hat, you have to have shoes on. This is sort of serious work. But uh, it would be great if you want to have a hand in the building of a barn for the farm coming out in the next 